In this curling I.O. video, we're going to cover how to handle orders, specifically offline payments for orders. So I'm quickly going to go through and make a purchase on my demo curling club. So I'm just going to grab the Monday Night Men's. And we're going to add a couple things to it just so we have a little more detail in the order. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and grab a gripper as well. And we'll also purchase a second league, but for a different curler. Okay, so that's good enough. Um, one thing worth noting, if you are accepting online payments and they pay with a credit card, your curlers pay with a credit card, there's really nothing you need to do with that order unless there's a problem and you need to issue a refund. But we're going to cover the cash check order. So I'm going to submit that. And then I'm going to jump over to the admin side. And up here in the top nav, I'm going to go to my orders section. So here's all the orders that have occurred at my club. And I can filter it based on, say I just want to see orders that haven't been paid yet, just submitted. So this is the order that I just created. And you can also search. So I could search by Homer or Marge, for example. I can also filter by dates of when the order was created. And by default, the from date will be the beginning of this, the current season. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this order here. And so this is the details, the line item details for the order. And we don't have any payments against it yet. So there's a few things I can do with offline orders, which means orders in a status of submitted that haven't been paid yet. And in the actions drop down here in the top right, this lists everything that I can do. So the most common thing I can do here is add a payment. Um, I can also make an adjustment. So I can either reduce or increase the cost of the order by adding an adjustment line item to it. I can send it back to the member's cart um, if they needed to make a correction or it's like a registration night at a club or something, then this could come in useful if uh, a mistake was made in the order. I can also delete the order. You can't do this once an order has been paid and you can never do this for online orders because it would mess up your bookkeeping. Um, but it does make sense for an offline order in a submitted status because maybe uh, you d you know they didn't they didn't want to make that purchase anymore or you're doing a test or something you want to delete it. You can also transfer ownership of an order. So if if all of your orders are being placed during a registration night at the club and they're all using the same registration email address, you might later want to transfer the ownership of the order to the actual. Um, curlers email address if and when they do create a curling IO account and you can do that using this. Okay so the first thing we're going to do is add a payment so we can click here or down at the bottom we can click here and by default the amount of the payment will be equal to the amount owing on the order but you can do partial payments so I could change this to $200. Uh, the deposited date is optional uh, but what this will do is, especially for a cash or check order, it'll just track when the deposit is being made, which will make it easier for you later on for bookkeeping and accounting. If you, one thing that you can do as well here is if, if someone comes into the club and they want to pay by a credit card, but they just couldn't when they made the order online for some reason, you can accept a credit or debit card here and you just have to get their credit card information and submit it. But we're going to do a cash order. We'll do a partial payment and we'll say we're depositing it today. So the default date for deposit will always be the current date. But if I was depositing it tomorrow, I could change that to tomorrow. And so I'm going to go ahead and submit this as a cash payment. And now we'll see that the status of the order is partially paid. The amount owing is now 348 instead of 548. And we have the $200 partial payment here. So at this point, the amount of actions I can perform are less because I can't send it back to the user's cart once a payment has been made. I can't delete it anymore. Um, and I can't make adjustments to it because it's, it's being considered kind of finalized at this point. Now, with an offline order, I can still delete payments. 
Um, so if I made a mistake entering this, I can delete it. If I had paid for this um, using a credit card and going through Curling IO's payment processing, then I wouldn't be able to delete it. The method of the payment would be online, and I couldn't delete it because, again, just deleting it would actually mess up your books. Um, it wouldn't your your columns wouldn't line up. But you can add a refund to either an, an online or an offline order uh, payment, and that will actually. And if it's a refund to an online, that'll actually go through our payment processor for you. All you have to do is just enter the amount of the refund, and it gets credited back to your your curler's card. Okay, so now I can add another payment at this point. So let's say Homer came in, paid the $200 today, and he comes back in next week um, to pay the remainder. And so the amount, the default for the amount is now again equal to the amount owing. It's just lesser this time, but it'll always default to that. And there's nothing wrong, there's nothing stopping you from having multiple partial payments. You can do that as well. Um, but for this case here, I'm just going to go ahead, and you could do an online and an offline payment, um, so all sorts of variations there. It'll just make your books a little more complicated, but it should all line up. I'm just going to go ahead and submit a cash payment, and so now the status of my order is paid. So I'm pretty much done with this. The amount owing is zero, and there's no more add a payment button here or in the actions. Okay, But I do have two payments here, and I can add a refund. Worth noting is the refunds have to be attributed directly to a payment. So I can't do a full refund of both of these with one refund. I would have to add and track them as two separate refunds. And that makes perfect sense when you're talking about online orders because you can't refund more than the amount of a charge. So you couldn't do, you couldn't span multiple charges with a refund. Um, so we've kept it simple and kind of followed that same logic for offline payments as well. Okay, so I, I if I want to add a refund, let's say to this $200, um, say he overpaid for some reason, I can actually select the item that I want to refund. So let's say they didn't want this locker anymore, or they didn't want any lockers, I could refund both of these. I don't have to put in an amount, um, and I can put the date of when that money was withdrawn. So Assuming that I'm giving them the money right now, giving them their refund right now, I'm going to refund both of these lockers. I'm not even going to enter anything for the amount because I know that it'll figure it out based on the cost of these, and I'll put in a reason. Longer want lockers, and we'll create that refund. Okay, so there's my refund. Both of those lockers were refunded, and they show up here as being refunded. And the order is still considered paid, okay? So there's no, because it is paid, but you will have a report that shows your refunds. Now I can come back and I can delete the refund as well. Again, this will only work for an offline refund, for, for money that I'm giving them back that I'm not going through our payment processor to credit their credit card back. So if this is when they come into the club and I hand them a check for the refund or, or give them cash for the refund, then I can delete it. Um, otherwise, it's in there, and there's nothing more you can do about it at that point. Okay, um, so I'm going to go ahead and delete all these just so I can show you, get the order back into its its uh, uh, submitted status. So notice when I deleted that payment, now it's again set back to partially paid. I'm going to delete this payment, and now the status is back to submitted, which gives us act. Ac which gives us access to all the all the features that you can do for an offline order. So at this point I'm going to show you adjustments. So I'm going to make an adjustment to this. I'm going to take $20 off and we're going to say um, Homer uh, is a lifetime member. Now there's a way to track lifetime members but I can't think of another reason to take $20 off so we're just going to use that as an example. So I'm going to go ahead and create that adjustment. And so that adjustment shows up here with the description I gave it and the amount of money. I, I gave it a negative amount, which means it's taking money off. So now my order has been reduced by $20. And I can now add a payment and continue on with it. Um, when I create an adjustment, I can also add a positive value. So I can actually increase the... Um, Let's say didn't want to volunteer. 
let's say I have like a mandatory volunteering or it gives you $50 off if you volunteer. Again, this would probably be tracked by a discount, but um, I'm just trying to come up with reasons to give adjustments. So we're going to use this one. Um, so I'm going to add $50 to the order because they weren't going to volunteer. And so now we've added $50 and the price of the order is now higher. It's now $50 higher. And again, I can add a payment at this point and then I'm and then I'm done with that order. Um, you can also edit the adjustment. So if you make a mistake or a typo here before it's been paid, um, you can also delete order items from it. Now this won't this won't affect the price if something's been paid, but it will affect you will be able to delete delete when it's in a status of submitted. So um, rather than accepting the payment and then refunding the lockers, if they told me they didn't want them anymore when they came into the club, I could just remove them directly from the order. And as you'll see, that reduces the price. So that, that removes those line items completely from the order. And so if I wanted to also delete my adjustment that I added, so I'm basically back at my original price minus the two lockers at this point. Okay. And now the next option we can do is send it back to their cart. So if I try this, so it just tell, asks for confirmation because what this does is it will clobber any existing cart that they might have. So if someone placed an order and then they came back another day and started building up a cart for something else but never got around to submitting it, and then you go and submit this order back to their cart, you would be clobbering that existing order. It's pretty edge case. It's not going to happen that often, but that's what this warning's about, just to make sure that you're confirming that you'll do this. So I'm going to hit OK. And so now it just tells me the order has been sent back, and now I can make now they can make changes to it. So if I go back to the public site and I go to my cart, you'll see that all the order has been sent back to my cart. And the reason why the lock is showing back up here is because we didn't actually change the fact that they wanted the locker here. So it the order gets recalculated based on the fact that this add-on is still selected here. So I would have had to actually edit the the registration for this for this uh, this league in order to remove it because it was added as an add-on. Okay, so at this point I can then reorder it, com recomplete my order, and then I can go back onto the admin and go back into my orders and there's this order again which has been modified by the by the curler so that's how send it back to your cart works um, transfer ownership so we would just put in the email address of who we want to transfer this order to so just defaults to one of the emails that it finds on the leagues whichever league shows up first which happens to be the friday night women's in this case and so we can just say transfer ownership. Now this is only going to work if Marge is actually logged in and verified this email address at some point in Curling IO, because we don't want to transfer ownership to an account which doesn't exist. We only want to transfer it to an existing account, otherwise you'll end up with orphans. You would still be able to see it and you would still be able to rectify that, but it would cause confusion or potential confusion. So that's why we've opted to make sure that it's only to existing accounts. So yeah, so you would just make sure that, that she is logged in at some point, created an account. She doesn't have to have purchased anything. Just logging into Curling IO on the public site is enough to create that account, and then you would be able to transfer this order to her. Um, so the last item on orders is just to delete the order. So I can just delete it. Now it's gone. It's not back in the user's cart. So if I go to the public side, there's no order in my, there's no cart here. And uh, on the admin side, there's no order. Again, you can only do that to offline orders. So that concludes our order video, and uh, we'll have more coming up.